Hello and welcome back to the FTB Spot. Today I'd like to start by going over a few of the comments that I've been getting. Thank you for leaving the comments. I've had a couple questions. One of the questions was, what type of wire are you using to hook up these thermal expansion machines? It's actually technically not a wire. It is this piece right here, which you saw me using, and this is called a gold conductive pipe. It is the build craft equivalent of a wire, but they call it a pipe. And the way you make this is you first make a golden transport pipe, which is two gold ingots and glass, and once you have that, you combine this with a piece of redstone to make the gold conductive pipe. That's how you make that. A little bit expensive, but that's the way the buildcraft power is transmitted. Now, there is one thing about this, is that you don't just hook up a piece of... Uh, you know what, let me... Uh, where's my wrench? There we go. And you're not... you're not... Alright. These don't always uh, turn if you don't have something next to them for it to power, so it's just going to face straight up. That's fine. We'll use it just like this. I'm um, going to hold down shift here and place a gold pipe and it does look like it's connecting but I don't believe that it will actually go through there if unless you have a uh, wooden transport pipe connected to it. And I'll just hook it up to this guy. Yeah, see nothing's going through it. There'll be a little blue line that'll go through it. You can't hook up an engine directly to the gold transport pipe. You need to have a wooden excuse me, gold, golden conductive pipe. You need to have a wooden conductive pipe, and the way you make this is to make a wooden, combine a wooden pipe with redstone, and that's just two pieces of wood and a glass for the wooden transport pipe, and then you combine that with a redstone, you get your wooden conductive pipe. So I'm gonna place one of those right there, and now you can see this, this little line every once in a while going through it, so it is powering this up now. You can see much faster than the redstone engines. So that is the way that works. You must connect the engine to the wooden conductive pipe and then route that into the gold conductive pipe for that to work properly. Uh, I had another question on it. They were having a little bit of trouble getting their pulverizer working and he said he had four redstone engines and it still wasn't working. So I'm going to go through this interface again. Uh, over here, uh, over on the left hand side, I realize you can't see my mouse pointer, but over on the, the left hand side, if you, if you move your cursor over there, it'll show you how much MJ is stored inside the machine. It takes 400 MJ to pulverize a single ore block, and it will wait until it gets to 400 before it starts. So if you're at 395, it's, you're not going to get any progress on this progress bar in the middle here, this little arrow pointing to the right. It won't even start until this hits 400 and you can see my redstone engine connected is just very slowly making this go up. Now the reason why it's not working right now is because I am using this redstone control panel on the side. You just click on this little redstone pile on the side and it'll open up this control. If you have the control status enabled, you can control it with a redstone signal. And I have the signal required high, which means that it will not operate unless it has a redstone signal. Now there's two ways you can fix this. You can click either the torch so that it is off, or you can click the pile just to turn the control off. If you click the torch to off, it will then change it so that it does not require a redstone signal to work. It will require a redstone signal to be off. So I'm going to move that back on, and once this one's done, it will stop operating again. You can see it's sucking all the MJ down. There we go, and it didn't go on to the next one because I turned it off again with that torch. The other thing you could do is click on the redstone pile button, and that will disable the control status, and that way it'll just run whenever it has power. So those are two things to check. One, make sure you have MJ at least to 400, and the other thing is to check and be sure that this is set correctly. I would recommend if you just want it to run constantly, just turn, click the little redstone pile right here and disable the status, and then it should run. If you're still having trouble, I'm not sure what it could be, but do let me know and we'll I'll try to figure something out. Okay, on to the last comment, and I need to set this up in my little display room here. I did put some jack lanterns in the floor for light, and I'm going to read this one because it was a pretty good tip actually 
there was a comment by, and forgive me if I slaughter the name, Mutabilis, Mutabilis. He says, the aqueous accumulator goes a lot faster if you have two source blocks adjacent to it. I find it odd you're trying to spotlight these machines in survival mode with neither a firm knowledge of what they do or even the resources to power them. Um, well, thank you for the comment. I did not know that about the aqueous accumulator. So let's run that first. And as we can see, it is going up at a decent clip. Let's try putting some water in there and see what happens. We'll work with just ice. Uh, it looks like it's about the same. So I'll break these into water. And yes, that is going up much, much faster. So you're right on that one, and that is a very good tip. I mean, that, that is just extremely flat fast. I do believe the MB is millibucket. So this is holding four buckets right now. And, you know, he called me out on not knowing that. I should have checked the wiki before I, I did do the spotlight on the accumulator. So thank you for that, actually, too, encouraging me. I'll, I'll take that as encouragement to research my stuff before I actually do one of these spotlights. So I can give uh, everyone who's watching the best information they can. That is what I want to do. As far as doing it in survival mode, I wanted to... Because, well, one, it's fun for me. I can just, I can use this world, my regular world I plan to spotlight. And the other thing is that by doing this, I've come across a number of things that I don't think I would have in creative mode. Uh, one of the things being that pocket crafting table and little quirk where it won't open. I doubt I would have discovered that in creative mode because I just had to use it for quite a while before I actually found that out. So I know this video is getting kind of long, but I do want to start working on the industrial craft. So let me get you guys started on that. And this is going to be for people who have not played Tekkit. All of you Tekkit folk are probably pretty familiar with industrial craft, but there are a few new people out here who need some help getting started in the industrial craft. So number one thing to do in industrial craft, in my opinion, is to make an iron furnace you do that by, there's two ways to do it, I recommend this route, you make a regular furnace and then you need, I have some iron cooking up in here and do I have more powder? Oh, I'm gonna throw a bunch more in there because we'll need it. I'll get to that machine in a little bit. So first you need the iron, the, a regular furnace and then you need iron ingots. There's, Like I said there's two ways, I'll show you the way I do not recommend. You can build an iron, iron furnace with iron ingots. That's eight pieces of iron for a furnace, or you can make a furnace out of cobblestone and use five pieces. So I do recommend that you save three pieces of iron. And with that, you make the iron furnace, which I actually have already made one. And this is different from the regular furnace. It, well, number one looks different. It will process eight, or excuse me, it'll process ten pieces of ore or ten logs into charcoal. It process ten, processes ten items, ten food, instead of the regular eight. A furnace made of cobblestone will give you eight. It'll cook eight steaks, it'll cook eight ore, it'll cook eight wood into charcoal for one piece of coal or charcoal, that is, using as fuel. The iron furnace uses one piece of fuel uh, coal or charcoal fuel and it will cook 10 items so you get an extra two items there. You're also going to end up using that for generators which because this video has been taking so long with some of the comments and questions I will get into the next video. The I do have a generator hooked up right here and a couple other machines and I'm going to try to go through these pretty quick uh, because a lot of people have already been playing them if they've been playing Tekkit. If you do have any questions and I'm going too fast, let me know and I'll slow down and come back to come back to one of the machines. And if you have any questions, of course, leave them and I'll help you as best I can. So again, thanks a lot for watching. Please like the video if you want to see more of them. And I hope to see you next time on the FTB Spot. Thanks and goodbye.